Good morning. Hello, Roger. So glad to see everybody's face here today, at least part of it. And uh, my name is Roger. Welcome to Southside Seventh-day Adventist Church. And here in the sanctuary, it's very nice and warm. The sunshine is beautiful. Still a little bit cold outside. One of the craziest uh, weeks of weather we've had in Indiana in uh, a few years, probably. And uh, wild and crazy. You just got to be careful out there because you got some idiots out there in a four-wheel drive pickup drive, truck driving 70 mile an hour on an interstate in the snow. Well, who's that? Wow, that, whoo, that went right over their heads there. Okay, so we're not going to walk around and shake hands and all that kind of stuff. Hi, Bill. Fist bump. And, uh, but we are going to look around the room and uh, do some uh, eyeball hugs and say, uh, good morning, everyone, good morning, everyone. Look around, look who's here, and say, hi, I'm so glad you're here. And, and Kim's here, and oh, man, we got it good. It's good. So we're very grateful for everyone that's here. We're very thankful for the technology that Fred and Alvin, and, and uh, they invented the Internet. Uh, but uh, they've, they, they've got us hooked up with technology, and we are live uh, this is not Memorex, this is live, and uh, so uh, we're very thankful for the Sabbath. And uh, we've got some announcements. Uh, the Nedley program, kind of slow on the uh, number of participants, but we're still trying to uh, work up a couple people to, to get the courage to come and all that and uh, get the benefit of small group. And it's a challenge, you know, getting people to get out of their comfort zone, get out of their homes, and to come. Uh, we're going to actually continue with the program, even though we've got low participation. We're going to still continue to come here to the, we're going to come here to the church and do it in the fellowship hall. And we're, that's on Tuesday night. And uh, so the volunteers, if you could show up by around 6, and uh, it'll be like 6.30 to 8.30, something like that, maybe 9 o'clock at the latest. But uh, so even though we've already been through the introductory sessions, we would still like to, for you to, uh, uh, if, if you're interested in coming, please do. It's the Nedley Depression and Anxiety Recovery Program. There are flyers out in the foyer in the hall. Uh, let's see. We also have an announcement about the uh, general conference session is not going to take place this year. And it's not going to take place in 2022, but it's going to be in 2023. No, it's going to be in 2022, but in St. Louis. Okay, 2022 in St. Louis. So uh, we can, it's not too early to start praying for that. So, um, you know, we come to church to worship the Almighty creator God who loves us. We come to church to fellowship and we come to encourage each other and to equip each other with how to serve others. Christianity is all about serving each other. That's life eternal. So we are very grateful uh, for fellowship even if it's through technology. So if you're watching online, or if you are uh, going to watch it later, at a later time recorded, uh, please be encouraged. And you are a part of this fellowship. You are a part of this church family. And we are so thankful for everyone that is here who is watching online, whether live or recorded later. Very grateful. Very grateful for God and our church family. Uh, I think that's announcements. Uh, so we're going to have a song here in just a moment. Uh, we are very thankful that we have Pastor Harvey in the church. Yeah, and, and his lovely wife Kim's here. Yeah, good to be here. Amen. And uh, so, Carol, if you have a song for us, what number do we have? 341. If you'd like to follow along in your hymn book, we are asking everyone, don't sing, but it's okay to hum. Uh, but uh, please, no singing at this point. Just, uh, but you can hear it and feel it in your heart.
Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay. Um, we do have a, a plate out in the foyer for uh, giving. We love him because he first loved us. And one of the ways we, in our hearts, like to express our love back to God is through supporting the sharing of the gospel with others. So there's online giving through our website, and there's also uh, giving uh, in the plate if you'd like to. There, in the pews, there are white envelopes for giving tithes and offerings. Um, so we're going to have Garden of Prayer. I ask that everyone just stay where you are. Uh, in the pews there, in your seats. And I'm going to come down and we will kneel together in prayer to God. And if you should have a prayer request, um, I think that we can do blue cards uh, and leave it in the, in the plate in the foyer. And our prayer warriors, um, led by Jane Lake and uh, Tracy, uh, they, uh, our prayer warriors are mighty, mighty prayer warriors. And they will pray over your praises your thanksgivings and your petitions, your requests. So let's... Uh... As far as possible, let us kneel before the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. How our hearts are lifted up together this morning on this Sabbath day with the sunshine, Father God, and we praise you. Our hearts give you thanks. You warm us inside. When things are difficult and troubles come, Lord, you are our foundation. You are our rock. You are our fortress. We come to you and we cling to you. Our hearts are lifted up by faith and trust that you are a loving, merciful, all-powerful, all-knowing God. And we thank you, merciful Father, for loving us enough to send us your son, Jesus, to express who you are. We praise you. We lift you up. In our hearts, we sing and sing praises to you. We thank you for this Sabbath day, Lord. Every week we can come and focus on encouraging each other in our fellowship. And we pray for those who are uh, observing online, Lord, who are fellowshipping with us at a distance. We ask, Lord, that you bless them as well. Bless each one here. Pour out your Holy Spirit in us, Lord, according to your knowledge of our need. Help us to be aware of the people, the, fa the uh, family and friends, and the people that are in our lives, whether it's through work or at the grocery store or just through friends. Lord, help us to develop a passion for them. Show us not only your passion through us to them, but show us how to be effective in sharing all that you have done in our lives so they too may understand the rich blessing that you have. Dear Father God in heaven, uh, folks are, there's some folks who are struggling. Um, folks here, uh, folks across our country, folks across the world. We think especially of those folks in the south where they're getting weather conditions that they're just not, they don't know how to handle those things. And so we ask, Lord, for your blessing upon them. Uh, protect them and give them courage and comfort. Show them how to uh, maybe find alternatives, how to, to survive for a few days. Help each one of us to know that if there's a way we can be the answer to our prayers to you, that you could use us to, to uh, answer that prayer for them. Father, we're so grateful for... Um, the, the first responders, the, our military and the medical staff, the folks who are fighting on the front lines of the COVID. Lord, you have, really you have really allowed things to happen that open our eyes to our need for both spiritual and physical preparation. We know difficult times will come. You have told us that clearly in the scriptures. You have told us that difficult times will come. But we know you got this. So we ask for your blessing upon those who are serving in the hospitals and, and the medical field. And, and, uh, I know the National Guard helps and, and all of our military, nurses, all these, the doctors, all these folks, Lord, please keep them safe. Lord, uh, we're so thankful 
to have Pastor Harvey here and Kim. We're so thankful that they're here. We know, Father God, that you are about to send a coal of fire from the throne. That Pastor Harvey is going to be given your message for each heart here today and those online. We know that your message transcends all time. We're so thankful for them to be here to bring us your message. We ask for your blessing upon them now. Anoint Pastor Harvey with your Holy Spirit. Lord God, all these things, all these praises and thanksgivings and petitions and, and requests, Lord, we lift up to you by the grace and mercy of your son Jesus as our high priest in heaven this day. We are thankful for how you have given to him to us for all eternity. We're thankful for your scripture and the promises and the angels. We're so glad that they're here with us today. We thank you. We ask that all that we say and do will be to the glory and honor of your son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Our scripture reading for this morning is found in 2 Timothy. That's in the New Testament. And uh, this is a letter from Paul to Timothy. If you can find it, it's in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. May the Lord add his blessing to the word. And now we'll have Pastor Harvey. All right, am I turned on yet? Hello, hello. Yes, I think I am. That's good. Wonderful, wonderful. Good morning. It, I'm going to take this off. Just going to let you know that. I don't think I can throw spit as far as you guys are sitting out there, so we're good. <laughs> yeah, Texas, man. I'll tell you, they... They, I have, uh, of course, I got kinfolk there and kinfolk in Louisiana and, and Oklahoma, and everyone was frozen up. No water, no electricity, uh, several days in a row. Oh my, oh my. But anyway, uh, they have, uh, everyone that I know of at this point all has electricity and water back. Some of them aren't praising the Lord for that, though, because they have broken pipes. <laughs> so as, as they thaw out, the, the pipes start uh, leaking. But anyway, they're glad to have a shower again, a warm shower. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Oh, Lord, we love you. We love you so much. You're so kind and so good and so amazing. Be with us now. It's, this is the time when you teach us. And this one who speaks is not worthy unless you speak through him in Jesus' name. Amen. God's, and I, and I say this in, in, the, in the Texas vernacular, God's got this, okay? One thing I want to know is, I want you to know is, I believe, and I'm not just saying this as we sometimes do, I believe we're on the very edge of eternity. How about you? Now remember, I do expect you to say something back. So let's practice. Say, everybody say amen. amen. All right, Hallelujah. Whatever, whatever feels good, go ahead and do that. It's good. But as I, as, as, as I see this, this transforming thing happening, this right before our very eyes, every piece of prophecy in place, I just go, Lord, you could come anytime. 
They, we could quickly institute the mark of the beast and go boom, boom, boom and be done. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. And he says the last works will be what? A rapid work. So as we look at this sermon, this is a sermon to prepare us. We need to be ready, amen? We need to hold on to Jesus good and tight and hard, and we need to learn what it is to have a relationship with him because that's the only way we're going to make it through. The Bible tells us in, 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 in Daniel chapter 12 about this time of trouble, this time of trouble that never has been since there was a nation. Now, have you thought of some of the troubles and times of troubles that God's people have gone through before? My, he's thinking World War II. I don't have to go back too far. The Jews getting wiped out, virtually six million. That's terrible. But what's coming is greater than anything that has ever been, or ever will be, because there'll never be another one. Because if before they get us and take us out, guess what? The Bible promises that he's coming to take us home and deliver us. That's what we're looking forward to. Uh, I think I've got this on. Boom. Ah, there we go. Oops. Ah, that's just, <laughs> these are indeed the last days. Second Timothy, I want to read it again. Very well read, Roger. Thank you. But know this, that in the last, what? The last days, what kind? Perilous times will come. Are we there? Oh, my. But no, for men will be lovers of what? Themselves. And lovers of what? Oh, my, we're in the middle of that. Of course, people can say, well, that's been that way for a while. But I want you to know that I can't get that to, to, to go. Yeah. Okay. Blasphemers, disobedient to parents. Have you noticed that? <laughs> disobedient to parents thing? You can tell my generation is long past. <laughs> Because when my parents said things, I, I always got the last word. Yes, sir, and yes, ma'am. That was all. That's what I got. That's all there was. It wasn't an argument. I remember one time my dad, he very cleverly put it because I'd gotten into my teenage years. He said, uh, he said, Harvey Joe, he said, I think you've mistaken this for a discussion. <laughs> this is not a discussion. I'm telling you what you're going to do. Yeah. And I, I see that. And I see kids in, in grocery stores grabbing stuff and throwing it down the aisles. I just don't know. I, 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 don't, I don't get it. But it's very, as God said it would happen, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving. You see that? Slanderers, uh, talking about others, gossiping without control, self-control, brutal, despisers of good. Mm. I don't know. It's, it's, it's horrible. Traitors, headstrong, haughty. I just, it's, just, it's just like it reads down the paper today of what's happening. Lovers of pleasure rather than what? Lovers of God. God's become second, third, fourth, and fifth in their, in their eyes. Having a form of godliness but denying its power. And don't look bad on this. In the very last days when, when you turn from them, don't hang around them. Help them, pray for them. If they need something, get them something. But don't hang around them because you can only get swept up. Remember, he says, don't even go. If they say he's in the desert, don't go. If they say he's in, over here in this room, don't go. Why? Because you're going to get swallowed up in it. In these last days, we need to be careful. But don't worry, God says what? I couldn't hear you. What does God say? I've got this. He's already got the plan for you and for me and for all of us and whatever we need to do. My wife and I are in the midst of thinking of uh, preparing to sell our home. That's how serious we are. We want to be able to leave quickly if we need to. I think, folks, that if you're not preparing, you need to. Now, don't, and now I'm not talking about preppers. If you're a prepper, bless your heart. It's okay. It's good. But, but you, know, you know, someone more guns and, and bigger amount of people will come and take that from you, okay, no matter how much you have. You got it? I mean, but if you do it, fine, and I may have to come visit you, okay? <laughs> but, but the idea here is that's not the kind of prepping you need to be doing. You need to keep, your prep needs to be getting to know Jesus Christ and Him completely and His righteousness. That is what's going to pull you through. You see, the God that I have, they can take everything away from me, everything away from me, and my God can make water come out of a rock. Amen? 
My Bible says that my bread and water is sure. How about yours? If that's the case, we need to know Him who can make water come out of a rock. Amen? We need to know Him that, that, that puts bread on the ground right in front of me. That's the prepping we really need to do. And why does God say that we need to come to Him? Because we'll never figure it out on our own. <laughs> never. For my thoughts are not what? Your thoughts. Nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So how do we truly prep? How do we truly prep, guys? You better find Jesus fully and completely in your life. God doesn't want no half-baked Christians in the last days. He wants you totally, fully, and completely surrendered to him. That's the only way you're going to make it through. And not only will he sometimes help you through, he sometimes carries you through. Amen? What should we be about then? We should be about our Father's business. If anything we should do in, in, our, in our preparation scheme is we should learn to do what God has asked us to do. Amen? Do I know it's different right now than it used to be? Yes. But you need to be finding ways to find someone who doesn't know Jesus. You need to be finding ways to get them to take Bible studies. I don't care if you have to use Facebook or whoever, me, we, or whatever some of those things are that they have out there that, that I'm no longer on. I'm telling you, you must be telling something. If you're hidden all in your little self and all to yourself, you'll be that way when Jesus comes back by yourself. He's very specific and very clear. We need to do good to, to please who? To please God. For what? The right reason. And here's what Scripture says. In talking about the very last days, in fact, talking about when Jesus will separate the sheep from the goats, he says this. The righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry? When did we feed you and feed you or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? Are you doing these things? If you're not, you need to prepare. Amen? There should be such a love in your heart because Christ is there that you just can't help it. I, don't, I, don't, I told you guys when I used to, when I was pastoring here, I don't, I don't dilly and dally around with the, with the guys that have their signs anymore on the corner. If they're there and I'm there, they get money. I told God, if you don't want me to give them any, then don't stop me there because I'm going to do it. I'm tired of that debating, you know, when someone asks you for something, give them that and a little bit more. Well, I don't, you know, Lord, but this guy may go do that. Don't worry about it. Let me worry about it. You need to be doing something. You need to be donating to the hungry or to the food pantries or, or helping someone else out when they, you know that they need it. My wife and I, we keep money back so that we can give offerings to people when they need it. Yeah, I don't get credit for that for my taxes. I really don't care. The credit I'm getting goes up to heaven. Amen? I don't need it here. My goodness. If I made more, maybe. <laughs> I don't make enough to worry about it. Then the king will say and answer to them, Assuredly, I say to you, and you know this one, you know this one, but read it with me. Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of these, the least of these, my brother, what? Is he expecting you to do that in the last days before his coming? Yes. It says it right here, if you go reading on through 25, it says, because you did not do this, they cast you out. You say, well, it's difficult. It is difficult. I agree. But find a way. Your, 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 your soul's in need of you loving people enough to feed them and clothe them and help them. Amen? So find a way. There's places around here that you can serve. There's places you can volunteer. 
Go volunteer. Do something. When Jesus comes back, he says, you've done it to me, this is good. If you haven't done it to me through the least of these, then you have problems. We need to know that. That's preparation for the end times. We're in the end times. Chapter 6 of Matthew talks also about doing things for God. Take heed that you do not do your charitable deeds before men to be seen by them. Otherwise, you have no reward. <laughs> so not, not only do you need to be doing things, but you just need to be doing it. Remember, the people said, when do we serve you? But when you did the least of these, when you weren't even thinking about me, you were thinking about them and loving them. You did it to them. You did it to me. He says very clearly, but don't do it so you can stand up on Sabbath morning and go, guess what I did? Yesterday, I gave $3 to the guy on the corner. Okay, wonderful. But all you're going to get is the glory of men if you do that. Listen to what God says. Therefore, when you do a charitable deed, do not sound a trumpet. You know how they get sayings? Don't toot your own horn. <laughs> That's where they got it from. It comes from the Bible. That's pretty cool. Therefore, do, when you do charitable deeds, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues, in the streets, that they may have glory from men. As surely I say to you, you have their reward. Would you rather have the reward of men or the reward of God? Of God, amen. But when you do a charitable deed, do not let your left hand know what your right hand's doing. Another saying that comes from the Scriptures, okay? Don't let your left, you shouldn't be letting that be known, Wiley. Now, if you're needing help in your ministry, yes, I do a ministry and this and such. Well, like Roger does. He gets up and he asks for the church to help if they want to help, and they help. They bake cookies and do other things for, for, for Kairos. Those are the kind of things you can get up and say, all right? But if you're just wanting to get glory from men, that's all you will get. You will not get the, the blessing from the Lord. That your charitable deed may be in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will himself obey you how, or, or, or excuse me, reward you how? Openly, yeah. Very good. So do good, but do good to what? Please God. Second, to, to, do, to be, do your prepping. Learn to enjoy prayer. Prayer shouldn't be an, a thing you just have to get through. Prayer shouldn't be that thing you just check off your list and you're finally glad it's over. I can remember as a pastor, and I admit to you openly, that prayer got to be so laborious for me that I would be praying along and then think I'd done well and it only been five minutes. And I thought it was maybe an hour. But folks, God transformed me. I can't wait to pray. I love Jesus. <laughs> and I love, I love talking to him. Sometimes I get to rambling, you know, just like it says, like you talk like you're talking to your best friend. I get to rambling. I just get to talking on, man. And before you know it, I'm, I'm talking about something else with him. You know, I'm discussing the kids or I'm discussing that, grandbabies, da da da. And I'm off into this and that and the other. But I love taking, and before you know it, I've, I've done an hour and didn't even think it was five minutes. What's the difference? I learned to enjoy prayer. And God wants you to learn to enjoy. It should be something you can't wait to get to. Think of him always, whatever your devotion place is, whether it's right there when you wake up and your eyes open up, you say, I love you, Lord, whatever it may be. Think of, if that's, that's the deal, that's fine. But wherever your place of devotion is, I promise you, folks, God's already there waiting joyfully to be able to talk to you. He loves it. That's what he used to do with Adam and Eve. Remember? Of course, the one time he came walking through the garden, they were hiding, and it's kind of been rough in prayer ever since. But God says, if you're truly prepping for heaven and for his soon coming, and you need to learn to enjoy to talk to him. And it's not trouble. It's joyful. It's joyful. The Bible says this, and when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites. He uses this a lot in, in chapter 6. For they love to stand 
Pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets and they may, that they may be seen by who? Men. Surely I say to you, they will have what? Their reward, but it will be from who? From men, not from who? Not from God. But you, when, when you pray, go into your room and when you have what? Shut the door, wherever that devotion place is. Pray to your Father who's in this secret place. And your Father who sees you in secret will reward you again, what? Openly. Yeah, you know, I hate to say this because sometimes, guys, someone will take it wrong. I don't want you to take it wrong. But if you ever had one of those elders, and, and, you, and you were not that brother, you, a very decent prayer. But you ever had one of those brothers that just goes on and on and on? I don't know if, normally, I'll be getting down and talking to you guys and moving back around, but my knee's bad now. I don't know if it's from years of prayer or what, but it doesn't work like it used to as well. And when I go upstairs, it's kind of like whoops and whoops, starting to get up. But I love talking to God. I just, I just completely do. But I don't, they, they'll stay there and pray, and if I'm on that wrong knee, you'll see me on one knee. I used to say to people, how surrendered are you? Are you on one knee or two knees? You know, I don't say that anymore because I, this one just, just tears me up to put any weight on it. And so here, here we are. Uh, you know, we, 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 we go on in our prayers and, and the guy goes on and oh, he's, oh, Lord. And he goes on and on and on just to be heard from what? Men. How we must tire God out with some of those prayers. But if you do it, in a loving, kind, and a joyful way in your secret place. Oh, God says, I'm there with you in that secret place. In fact, I'm waiting on you to get there so that you and I can have time to talk to one another. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them. For your Father knows the things you have need of. Read it with me before you ask. He already knows. But he still says what? Ask. And it shall be given unto you. Okay? Still there. He wants you to talk to him. So learn to what? Learn to enjoy prayer. Learn to do the, God's, the business of God. Next, fasting to be seen only by who? Now, y'all can't tell it, because especially if you're watching online, because it's, the camera adds 10 pounds, okay? But I've actually lost 43 pounds, guys. And I plan this time to make it stick. And, and, and I kind of messed up. My wife makes a, a, a chocolate cake, and you know me in chocolate. And, and my, my wife makes chocolate cake. She hadn't made... She had, no one in her family has made it for 30 years. It was her great-grandmother's or grandmother's, one or the other. And she made that cake. Oh, my goodness. Whew. It melts in your mouth. It's deep, dark chocolate. It's got this special German chocolate icing. Oh, my. Are you hungry yet? For, and I gained six pounds back eating that cake. I said, man, you got to quit making this cake. <laughs> I said, I meant to, to stop leaving because I was, I was cruising up to 50 pounds there. And I'm still on my way. Pray for me. But praise the Lord, I got, I got room in, I got room in my, I'm going to have to get some new britches, I'll tell you that. Oh, that's for sure. But I want you to know that, that fasting can be a part of what you're doing because not just so you can lose weight. That's really not what fasting is about. You need to learn to fast, folks. Take one day a week or, or a half a day a week or whatever you can do <clears throat> because fasting teaches you discipline. When you fast, it teaches you that you can do something more than just give yourself whatever yourself wants. Amen? It's not just fasting to just, just you know, but if you fast... The Bible even tells you how to do that. Let's watch and see. Whenever you fast, do not be like the, say it again with me, the hypocrite. So he's just on them in this chapter. With a sad content. You see, you coming to church going, like, oh, what's wrong? Oh, I'm fasting today. You shouldn't do that. 
He tells you to do it just the opposite. So for they disfigure their faces that they may appear to be fasting. Like, oh, pity me because I'm so pious and so holy and I'm fasting today. That's ridiculous. God doesn't, God doesn't, doesn't do that. Surely I say to you that they have what? Their reward. Whose reward is it? Men's reward, right? But you, when you fast, anoint your head. That means do, do yourself up a little bit, right? Yeah, don't even look like it. You know, look good, you know? Get, you put it on your best stuff and your greatest smile. It says, anoint your head with oil and wash your face, you know? Clean up a little bit. And so that you do not appear to men to be what? Fasting. But to your Father who's in the secret place. And your Father who sees you in secret will reward you what? Openly, doing things for the right reason, getting ready for the last days. You're going to need to learn to pray and fast because it gives you discipline, folks, to make decisions and stick with it, okay? If you have, I always have to give this anymore. Isn't it ridiculous what the laws and lawyers have done to us? But I love Brother Chris, but, you know, he's still a lawyer. But uh, if you have diabetes... Or you have problems, and you have to eat a little bit, fine. If you want to do a juice, do a juice, whatever. Don't, don't, don't hurt yourself by fasting, but don't hurt yourself by not fasting. Figure out something. And there are people that are fasting from Facebook and fasting from this and Twitter and all that rest of that junk. I permanently fasted from Facebook. I'm, I'm, I'm out. I'm deleted. I'm, I'm gone. I'm, you know, I'm out of there. <clears throat> I tried MeWe, and then I hardly get on that one because I don't know anybody, and that's probably the best thing that ever happened to me. But I want you to know, you need to be careful. Take time to discipline yourself because when you go through the time of trouble, folks, you're going to have a hard time getting through if you don't have some discipline. Let God teach you in fasting. It doesn't have to be a whole day. It could be a half day. It be 12 hours. There's intermittent fasting, too, if you want to try that one. But this, try it to see. Fasting to be seen only by who? By God. Lay up treasures where? If you're prepping for the last days and you're trying to keep stuff, and you're trying to hoard it up, you are in such trouble. Do <clears throat> you remember the, the little parable that Jesus had of the guy who had uh, a great crop? He filled up his barns and he still had more to put in barns. Do you remember that, that parable? And then he decided instead of giving it to the poor and helping others, what did he do? He just built more barns. And he died the next day. Great, great, huh? You got to really use those extra barns and all that food. Do you see what we're saying? Start learning to lay treasures up where? And how does it mean you don't save and you don't keep things going in a way that you're, you're good with good steward for God when, they, when, he needs, when he needs your help? But do not lay up yourselves treasures on earth. You're not taking any of this with you. You're not even taking this body. You got a new one. Praise the Lord. New knee, yes. That will be great. I'll take it. But do not lay, for yourselves, uh, for, uh, lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, but where moss and rust and to destroy, where thieves break in and steal. <coughs> but lay up for yourselves treasures where? In heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys, where thieves do not break in and steal. Lay up those stars on your crown. You know, or lay up that, uh, that... Just think, when it's all said and done, folks, just think about that. What do you want to do when you get there first thing? Well, first thing I want to do is be with Jesus. Amen? Yeah, because I enjoy talking to him now. I, just, I really enjoy talking to him up there. I got no schedule other than what he tells me to do. But take time to lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Give when you can give. Help others when you can help others. Make it a good thing to do and to think of. If you're prepping, you need to. For where your treasure is, guess what? There your heart should be. Kind of places you again in a place where you really want to be in heaven with. This should be something you're doing. Laying up treasures there, not here. Lay up treasures in heaven. I will hurry. The lamp of the body is the eye. Now, 
I can hear somebody saying, yeah, you're off Facebook now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're not looking at all that stuff going on there and all those fights and fusses and all that. Yeah, I, I don't. You need to be careful what you let your eye see. Because what your eye sees, it locks away in your heart, which is your what? Your mind, your brain. And it, I can't wait till God empties out all the junk that my eyes have seen over years of not being a Christian and other things. What do you allow your eyes to see? I mean, folks, your phone's got it on there. Bad stuff. Kids can get to it in about three or four seconds. And we look at the, the stuff that just makes you angry or, or does this, changes your attitude. You don't need to be on there. You need to be careful what you put before your eyes. I still struggle with stuff. So we're going to be praying for each other, amen? I like some TV shows. I told you guys that. And I've got to work on those. I can remember when I used to love to watch Bonanza. Does anybody even know what Bonanza is? You're all gray-headed and old, I know. That was an old Western. And we look at it now, we think, well, Bonanza, that's pretty tame. You know? Oh, sure it is. He, they drink beer and they hang around saloons with, with bar women and, and, they, and they fight and they fuss and they kill people. That's a great thing to watch. But I never thought about it when I was letting what? My eyes what? See. I know that was the great thing. I loved Westerns. But see, when God starts changing you, <laughs> suddenly when you see something and you start wincing, you go, no, that's not good. You shouldn't have that. No. So be careful. For here's what the Bible says. The lamp of the eye of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, you're seeing good things, your whole body will be full of what? Light. But if your eye is what? Bad. If you're seeing bad things, your whole body will be full of what? Darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? It continues to eat away your Christianity is what it does. And you don't even notice it. You're making decisions that you wouldn't have never made or accepting things to see that you would never done before because once you start watching it, what? You get desensitized to it. And pretty soon you just don't even notice it. How dark, is you, or how dark are you then? You're not even noticing. The lamp, the body of the eye. Be careful. When you're prepping for, for Jesus coming, start putting good things before your eyes. This is the last part. I will hurry. Do not what? Worry. Worry. One guy told me worry is a sin, and I, I have a hard time with that. I believe it, <laughs> but I'm always saying, I'm worried about that. I shouldn't be worried about anything. Amen? But I, I do worry. That's terrible. So, but God says this about that, and we're going to continue in chapter 6 of Matthew. You're getting a whole study on, on Matthew chapter 6 today. Therefore, I say to you, what are the next three words that Jesus himself, in red letters, if you have that kind of Bible, said? Do not worry. <laughs> Jesus said that. He said, I don't want you worrying about stuff. Because worry in the last days, if you're worried whether you're going to eat or worried whether you're going to have water or worried how this is going to go or, or whatever's happening to you during the time of trouble, you're going to be in a terrible position, folks, a weak one. God says you need to learn to trust me. I've got this. I can bring forth water out of a rock for heaven's sakes. There's rocks all over the place. Amen? I can go out in the yard, pick up a rock. I can have water. I mean, that's the way my God is. Amen? It's the truth. Do not worry about your life, what you will eat, what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is life not more than food and body more than clothing? I can remember when I first became a Seventh-day Adventist, I had gone through a period where I didn't have a lot of money, even though there was a time I had a lot of money, and I blew it all on the world, and then I didn't have any money, and all of a sudden, my, 
I was just, I had clothes, but they really weren't church clothes. And I can remember I gave my life to Jesus and I wanted nothing more than church clothes. Could not afford at that point to be able to go and get clothes like I can now. And I still haven't replaced my pants yet, but I will. But I pray and say, God, I really, I really need it. And, I, and that, at that point in time, I wore everything Western. I was in Texas. That's the way we dressed from, since I was a little bitty boy, and I had Western stuff on. And, 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 you know, regular guys that would give you these kind of pants, they don't go real well with boots unless they really are long enough to be able to look good. And so I thought, well, Lord, just give me something I can wear that's nice to go to church in. I really want to look better for you. Not for anybody else. I don't care what anybody else thinks about it. I just want to look better. Because they were starting to let me teach then. I mean, I, well, I wasn't in church for two months, and I was teaching a class. They just couldn't find anybody. You know, <laughs> that's just the way it was. And, 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 and so I, the lady, a lady came up to me. Her husband had passed away just prior to my coming, probably about three or four months before I came into the church. And she said, Harvey, what's your, what's your waist? And I said, well, it's a 32, 33. <laughs> that was a day. <laughs> yeah, I remember those days. But 32, 33, somewhere in there, you know. She said, really? She said, what's your inseam? I said, well, I'm tall. I said, I use 30, especially with my boots, I use 36-inch inseam. She goes, Really? He said, I struggled with my husband's clothes. I didn't know what to do with him. He's a 33, 36. And he wore nothing but Western clothes. Really? I said, what size is his boots? <laughs> and she said, they're 10 and a half. So I said, perfect. God just laid out what I needed. What? Right before me. He knew what I needed even before I prayed, had worked on this woman's heart prior to it. That's why he says, do not what? Worry, I got this. God's amazing. He's so good, I just love him so much. I, I, I can't wait to talk with him and talk about him. It thrills me. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father, what? Feeds them. Are you not more, are you not of more value than they? Absolutely. You're created in his own image. Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit, 18 inches, or anything else to your statue? Does worrying help? No. Worrying only causes problems. Worry causes health problems in your stomach and other things. It causes depression, for heaven's sakes, which is your, your, what you're doing your deal on. It does. Which of you, by worrying, can add one cube? What are you going to add? Nothing. So why do you worry about clothing, he says. Harvey, I got a guy who's passed on who was a good Christian, who has pants that just fit you and coats that just fit you. We must have been twins, except I was better looking, I think. You know? I don't know. He's a sweet guy from everything I heard. But why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, and they neither, they neither toil nor they spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory and all the gold he wore and all the fancy stuff he had was not arrayed like one of these. Now, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? What's the problem? O oh, ye of, of little faith. When you're worrying, you're showing you have what? No or little faith. Is God going to take care of you? You bet he is. He's, he's in the business of taking care of us. Oh, I, I know we sometimes ask for things we really don't need. Like I told you one time, I said, I, 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 I always wanted a, a Corvette, red, T-tops. And he gave me a Honda and said, you'll enjoy the gas mileage. But God's good and he provides, amen? 
What a God he is. Therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For all these things, the Greeks, the Gentiles, the non-believers, folks, the non-believers worry about that stuff. And God says, why are you worrying about it? You're a son and daughter of God. <laughs> Trust him. Believe in him. You need it in this time of trouble coming up, folks. You need to see the light at the end of the tunnel even when you can't even see through the tunnel. Much less light at the end. Amen? You need to be strong. But you can't be strong and you're worrying. You need to learn to have faith and know that he'll provide whatever you need. There was a man in Cuba told us he, he came to our, our pastor's meeting in, in Texas and he was giving his testimony. And, and, and you, you can read it. He's got a book, but I don't remember the name of it now. It's been too long. But he, he was a pastor in Cuba. They occasionally would take their pastors in, right? And, and they would, uh, they said, you're going to start working on, the, on, on, that, on Saturday. He says, no, I'm not working on Saturday. You can beat me. You can do anything you want, but I'm not working on Saturday. And the Cuban official said, yes, you will. He says, no, he won't. He said, if you don't, if you don't work on Saturdays, I will take away your food. He said, fine. Took away his food. One day, didn't eat. Two days, he said, that was a good fast. Later, a cat comes by the window. As the cat comes by the window, it drops a piece of bread off by the window. He said, well, thank you, Lord. And because the, the prison window was here and the, the ground was right here. You know, just above, just below, just how you, how you like this. Yeah, you have the window in the ground because he was underground. He was a the dungeon one, you know. But he could see out the window and there was the ground. And the cat come walking by and dropped a piece of bread right by the window. He ate the bread. Come by the next day. And the next day, the cat had two pieces of bread. <laughs> two pieces of bread. How wonderful. <laughs> and so he ate the bread. It was wonderful. The guy came in and says, okay, I want you to know the next day. Are you going to go now and you're going to work on this Saturday thing? He says, I'm not working. He says, why you, why you look? You, sh you should be hungry by now. About that time, that cat came by and dropped that bread off. <laughs> he goes, that's my cat. <laughs> that's, he gives the cat food and the food, you know, I mean, I don't know that I want to eat after a cat. I've got two. I probably would then. But anyway, regardless, you know, God's got ways that you haven't thought of yet. Amen. You don't know how he's going to work it out. He's going to. That's what he said. Oh, you have a little faith because you don't even believe he's going to be able to work it out. You're God. Have you ever thought about how big your God is? Have you ever thought about it? In this Milky Way galaxy, folks, there are over, and I don't have to count them. It's way past my, my, my abilities. But there's way over, there's over 150 billion Star systems like ours with planets around it. Just in the Milky Way. <laughs> and you know how many galaxies like the Milky Way there are? Used to be 100. Now it's almost 200 billion they're, gave, they're, 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 they're finding. 200 billion galaxies. Milky Ways, if you want to call them that. Our Milky Way is just a speck in space. Our star system is just a speck in the Milky Way. And you and I are just a speck of dust on earth. Yet God said, you're worth it. I will go and die for you. How big's your God? He can't, he can't help with the rent. That's just too much. Really? He only built billions and billions of stars out there. I think he can probably do it. Don't you? You see, the problem isn't God. The problem is faith. And what shall we wear for these things, the Gentiles? The, the unbelievers worry about stuff like that. We shouldn't be. For your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these. But seek first the what? The kingdom of God and His righteousness and all, all, how much? All these things shall be added unto you. Amen? Do you believe it? He says, then why worry? It doesn't create anything but problems for you. 
God says, trust me. I told you all the story when I, when I had my Sabbath problem. I won't go through that with you, but I never, I never did get to finish, I believe. And if I did, forgive me. You can go through it one more time. It's been years now. But what really happened after I had my job problem? During the job problem, it got fixed. We needed help. It just showed up miraculously. But when I, this is the God we serve. This is, this is I love this about him. That's why I've been so different. Why I chew myself out when I don't when I don't trust him enough. But here we were. I had gone four weeks without any work and I put in applications everywhere. Went five weeks without any work but the church had, had come and said we're worried about you. You haven't said a thing but we're worried about you. And I said well God's good. He'll help everybody. He says well he did. He they said, the church took up an offering for you. That's wonderful. And that helped. Let's get through that portion. But I still needed a what? I still needed a job. And so I, I, I got word that there was this job opening coming at Ross Company, which was a cement mixing place. They, 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 they made cement mixers of different flavors and kinds and aggregates that would bring all the pieces and drop it down into a, a cement mixer truck type thing. And it was for inventory control manager. And I had that in my resume. So I went there. And of course, it's like all jobs, what, what happens? They get to the, what can you not work? And the guy, I was in the personnel office and I went into him to visit with him and it says, he says, what's this uh, Sabbath thing? This, you said Sabbath, what is, what is that? I gave him a little explanation on the Sabbath. I said, you know, Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. He says, what do you mean you can't work? We need you. This place could be going 24 hours a day or it could be going seven days a week according to what our plants are need. And I said, well, I just can't work it. He says, well, I don't know. He said, go, go out there and sit, sit out in front of the receptionist. And I said, okay. And I went out and sat in front of the And I started praying. I think she might have thought I was, I was weird because I was never going, oh, you're talking. <laughs> she was, oh, I was talking to myself or doing something. You know? I was praying away, saying, oh, Lord, please, this should be a good job. I know how to do it. This would be wonderful. Because I don't know if you know what a, what a um, inventory control manager for an assembly plant is, is wherever you go to the next place, you better have all the parts ready. Because if you stop it here, it stops where? All the way down. And that's the way it worked in that place. And so here I was, uh, I was praying for this job. And, eh, if it's not a job, eh, Lord, it's okay. And about that time, this big, tall Texan came in. I didn't know him at that time, but he's the only one that had the white hard hat. Everybody else had different colors, but his was the one. He was the what? The hoss, the boss of the place. He comes storming in the back door. Wham! He slams the back door. He storms up to the personnel uh, guy, the HR guy. Gets in his office, wham! He blanks that door, and everybody's just looking. You know? And you heard the voices going, and it got quiet. Thought, huh? The guy with the white hat, he, he opens the door up, huh? and he looks out at me like this. And I'm giving him the puppy dog in the pound look, you know. <laughs> <laughs> And, and here he was, he, he, he looked at me a little bit longer, and he looked, and he just he closed the door. And about that time, the HR guy comes out, and he's coming, come here. And so I walked up to the door. What happened is the inventory control manager was supposed to have worked another week, but just quit and left. And they were what? Getting behind on some things, and the whole assembly plant was what? Stopped. Isn't God good? <laughs> So he, I came in the office, and this guy had hands like baskets. I mean, they're so big. He was just huge. He was like six foot seven. He's just a huge guy, and I felt like a little boy shaking my dad's hand, you know. He grabbed my hand, and he like this. He said, you can take that Sabbath thing off anytime you want, but I want you here any other time. I said, you got it. You got it. You got it. Never, ever, ever asked me to work for three and a half years that I worked there, one Sabbath. In fact, sometimes they would say, 
can you work just a little longer? You don't have to work until you get into sundown, but can you work this today just a little bit longer? I need something from you. I need to talk to you for a second. Yeah, you sure. But sundown, I'm, I'm out of here. That's my God. He shut down a plant so I could have a work to do. That's God. Why? Worry. Why worry? But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Put God first. And all these things shall be added unto you. That's amazing. If you're going to do prepping, folks, let me flip through that just to help you remember. Do not worry. Do good to what? Please, God. Learn to enjoy what? If you don't ask God, Lord, teach me to enjoy talking with you. Fasting to be seen only by who? By God. The lamp of the body. Watch what you put in your mind through your eyes. And do not what? Do not worry. God's got this. Father in heaven, we sure do love you. We do. We're not unbelievers. We know you. Please teach us, Father, to... Please teach us to not worry and, and to know that you can provide anything and everything we need. Thank you. Teach us. Prepare us for your soon coming. It's coming so soon. It's, it's right upon us, Father. Father. We want to be ready. We want to be not worrying. We need to be looking up because our redemption is drawing nigh. We, we need to be looking up because Jesus is coming to get us and take us to heaven. We need to be looking up because that's where our treasure is stored. Father, please, have mercy upon us. Forgive us when we had little faith. Forgive us, please. Right now, I pray. And then give us faith. Give us an abundant faith. More than enough faith. Teach us to walk in your ways. Teach us to discipline ourselves. Teach us to enjoy talking to you, Father. It's so important. Teach us to, to put our treasures where nothing can ever harm it. But that's our eternity with you. Father, we love you. I know today that those online right now that they may well be having troubles, those here in the sanctuary may well be having troubles. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray, please be with them right now. If they're worrying, Father, teach them not to worry. Let them see the miracles that you'll perform, that they may have what they need. Father, right now I ask, and if you're, if you're watching online right now, or if, if you're... If you're here in this sanctuary right now and, and there's something that's amiss in your life, whether it's a, a sin that overtakes you or whether it's just a need you have in your life, uh, uh, whether it's not enough money and too much month, there's a God that's big, big, and loves you and wants to help you today. And if that's your case, even at home right now, even right here in this sanctuary, just raise, I won't ask you to come forward, but I'm going to ask you to raise your hand and say, Pastor, would you please pray for me? I have a need that needs to be handled. Amen. Bless you. Amen. 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 Bless you. Bless you. Amen. Yes. Maybe health. Amen. It may be finances. It may be family. It may be... It could be marriage. I don't know, but God does, and God is the one who can make it good again. Anyone else before I pray? Anyone else? Amen. Bless you, little one. Father in heaven, we again love you. I don't know what each one of these hands represent. I have no clue, Father, what it is, but you do. You know them, they're your children. At home, there right now, watching 
he is, or here in the sanctuary, uh, hear, hearing it here, Father, they have needs. Father, teach them and show them they have nothing to worry about. Give them faith if they need it. Help them to walk in your ways and learn to trust in you if that's what they're needing. But Father, right now they're needing help. So help them not to worry. Whatever those hands were raised for right now, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Lord, and our Redeemer, that you'll take care of those things and we can't wait to see how it works out. For you're amazing, an amazing God. In Jesus' name we pray and we ask it. Amen. we have a song? Do you got a number? 371. 371. So Carol's going to play us a song. We'll hear that and we'll have closing prayer. Amen. We're so glad that everyone was here today. And what a powerful message we have heard from the throne on high. Now let's have a word of prayer. <clears throat> Dear Father in heaven, we are so grateful, Lord. We lift up the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, that you have given us a message about how to prep and prepare our hearts, have you prepare our hearts for your son's soon coming. We thank you for all your many rich blessings today, including the Sabbath. Please be with each one as we go our separate ways for those here in the sanctuary and also uh, for those uh, watching online. We're giving you all the glory, Father. We lift up your son, Jesus. And uh, in the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. God bless each and every one of you. Have a wonderful Sabbath afternoon.